It's a fairly small burn, but it's fairly complex. Fighting fire with fire. As the danger period approaches, firefighters on the northern outskirts of Sydney are conducting a hazard reduction burn. It's been almost two decades since this area last burnt and the fuel load is high. It's a three and a half hectare burn, uh, which will offer protection to about 100 homes. It's becoming harder to get these burns done thanks to climate change. It's making it more challenging as far as the window for prescribed burning and, um, and there, we're also seeing more extremes like increasing rainfall events which are making it harder for us to do hazard reduction but then fire seasons come on a lot quicker, particularly as the temperature increases things dry out a lot quicker. The risk of more extreme fire behaviour is only set to rise. This map from the CSIRO shows this area already has potential for an incredibly destructive fire. And the data, which uses weather, fuel and terrain information, is now being produced on a national scale. It has had quite a significant impact already and stands to just be a really firm basis of which we can revolutionise how risk management and integrated risk management is achieved across Australia. Following a Royal Commission into the horror 2019-2020 Black Summer season, a specialist team at the CSIRO was tasked with producing nationally consistent data on things like fuel loads and risk levels. What we can do as a national science agency is understand the best aspects and attributes of how those states do it and try to build a unified system that builds, simply builds on the best of, of what states are being able to do and put our perspective on top of that as well. The data is still a work in progress, but it will support a federal response during nationally significant fires. It's also being used to protect vital telecommunications towers. I remember you saying the embers can be as small as two millimetres and this will stop anything down to that size. The team analysed more than 7,000 Optus sites to assess the bushfire risk, including this one at Dixon's Creek in Victoria's fire-prone Yarra Ranges. The red dots show areas posing higher risk and work has now been undertaken to reduce the threat here and at 39 other sites. The measures that we recommended and were implemented and are still in real, really good conditions really made about a six-fold um, improvement in its likelihood of surviving your typical to worst case fire events. It's an absolutely massive number and what it means to the community is, is an absolute game changer. The CSIRO data also shows if the fire hazard is projected to increase or decrease with climate change. The red indicates a higher risk under this climate model, which is the case for this area in Tasmania, where Julian de Blanc lives. I guess you can't just dwell too much on it. All you can do is, is take the necessary precautions uh, and hope at the end of the day that the fire risk uh, is, doesn't eventuate. Mr de Blanc has taken several precautions, installing cladding outside, double glazed windows and ember protective blinds. The work's been recognised by the Resilient Building Council and it could mean he gets a discount in his insurance premiums. If you're an insurer, well, surely you're going to be wanting to insure properties that are resilient against, against fire or against flood or whatever the risk is that uh, has been taken on. The Royal Commission also requested the CSIRO team develop nationally consistent classifications and data on fuel loads. Following debate about the use of hazard reduction burns, it also recommended better communication with the public about fuel management. They're actually really important habitat for ground-dwelling mammals. A fire raged through this area of the Grampians in February, but Forest Fire Management Victoria says large areas were protected by an earlier prescribed burn. Alongside areas that were scorched are areas with significantly less damage. You can see the change in structure. The, the, the surface is, uh, you know, more vegetation, and particularly the canopy of the trees, we have, you know, good intact canopy. It's really important from a biodiversity point of view. We know from research that uh, different species will inhabit uh, these different sort of structures of the bush. This mosaic style landscape burning is also useful with the suppression of fires. With summer upon us, 
fire services across the country are preparing for the season ahead. At the same time, the Royal Commission is preparing to hand down its final report. It'll happen early next year and it's expected to show that 33 recommendations have been addressed and 20 others are still underway. The benefit that those that, that Royal Commission has really lies within the um, ability to understand and pick up those recommendations and honour them and take them forward. Work on the CSIRO's data is continuing and so the latest maps won't be available for this fire season. Natalie Whiting, ABC News.